Roger, the, the number on Friday, it makes it harder or easier for the Fed to orchestrate a soft landing? You know, I think it does both, which is not, you know, the answer you wanted probably. Let me tell you why, though. Um, and so we know that the economy is going in with more power to create jobs, which is a net positive thing. I think it also clearly says to them that, you know, 75 basis points has got to be on the table uh, the next meeting. But I think overall, uh, overall, I think it's going to make it a little harder for them to develop um, a, a soft landing, only because there's so much momentum, forward momentum in the economy. I think they're going to have to tap on the brakes even harder and I think risk sort of over tightening and get to uh, what one hopes is only a mild recession. So on balance, I think uh, this kind of strength, they're not seeing the, the slowing that they need or want to get inflation under control. And I think that means uh, perhaps, you know, tightening more uh, than markets currently expect and therefore an even higher risk of, uh, of, of a harder landing. Do you view the current uh, situation as an aberration in terms of historical precedent in that we, we have seen in the past where we've had uh, relatively high unemployment and solid output in terms of GDP, and it's been pointed out that to have such strong employment right now with the possibility of even back-to-back -back negative quarters of GDP is something you don't usually see. You don't see really low unemployment and sort of meh output. No, look, I think it is aberrational in the way that you've talked about, um, you know, particularly this notion of what might be described as a technical recession with two quarters of negative GDP due primarily to, you know, sort of international factors, so-called net exports. But uh, what's more interesting in many ways is how this uh, situation has historic precedents. Uh, going back to uh, the end of the Second World War and the Korean War, we saw supply-side-driven uh, disruptions that led to inflation. The Fed had to fight it then. And then, obviously, uh, as you know, there's a lot of reporting on the 1970s, and is that uh, a historic precedent? So we have both an anomalous situation of very strong labor markets uh, and other elements showing weakness, uh, and we have a situation where many people are looking at historical precedent to try to, to figure out what the Fed is likely to do. Yeah, the, the stop and start nature of, of the Arthur Burns Fed that it looked like it was resolved to take on inflation only to uh, the, the resolve would be weakened whenever we saw a slowdown, which is only natural. But do you think that the, the, the current Fed has studied that period uh, to the point where they don't want to make that mistake and, and they would have the opposite of feet of clay? So they, they'll, be, they'll have, they're firmly resolved to see this through, even if there's a significant amount of pain to, to the economy and, and to the American uh, per, uh, public? I think they are resolved to see it through, uh, partially because they have studied uh, the, the mistakes of the Fed at that point with the stop and start. They have studied and talked a great deal about a problem that the Fed then had, which was uh, an absence of credibility on its inflation fighting uh, bona fides. Uh, they know that back then the Fed did not have a numerical inflation target. Now they do. Uh, and so I think the, the odds are that the resolve will be there, um, the opposite of the feet of clay, to, to use your phrase. Mm -hmm. uh, and consequently, uh, the, the risk of a of, uh, recession, very, very high. Uh, the final point I'd make is we've heard them talk about, you know, pain being caused. We've heard them talk about a narrow path to a soft landing. I think they are setting uh, society up, the economy up, uh, the individuals up for the possibility of you know, a rough ride and, and perhaps a hard landing with what we hope will be a soft and shallow recession.